Hello and welcome to Tears from the Tavern, the Sea of Thieves official podcast and what a show we have for you this week. It's 2018 and I'm joined by this motley crew who are going to take me through all the stuff that we did in 2017. Not all of the things. All of the things, all right the from things. January right through to December. It's a long podcast, so get <laughs> settled down. Like, um, Yeah, so basically we're going to round up what we have done since October, I think was episode 8. Yeah, we're a little overdue. This is episode 14, so episode 13 was closer to Halloween, I think. Um, So a lot of stuff has happened in that that gap there. So we've had the release date announced video, we've had two dev gameplay videos on our YouTube channel, and the progression live stream, as well as uh, Mike's lovely video going up on the YouTube channels as well, chatting through that. Which got moved into a 12 Days of Christmas on Greg's Twitter, I spotted. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Kind of got wrapped up really quickly at the end then, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he ran out of it. Greg never runs out of it. <laughs> and also, the game is now available to pre-order. We're out March 20th. We've announced that in the time that we're, we're away mm. as well. So that's a nice cheap plug there for you to go uh, pre-order that now. Receive the Black Dog Pack in-game items and access to our closed beta. You forgot that. There we, go. <laughs> we all pre-ordered? I have. Oh, yeah. Have you actually? I just watched test the store flow work. (laughs) 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 When they went live? No, I I have, yeah. Just just tested it 20 20 odd times. (laughs) (laughs) I am our pre orders. Um, so of course, um, if you're watching us, then there's the opportunity to go listen to us. If you need to continue, yes. if you don't get to watch it all, and you can go listen to us in the car on the way to work or on the train or however you mode of transport you go on. Um, and then uh, <laughs> if you are listening to us and you want to see all these beautiful faces, then of course you can go and watch us all on the lovely 4K on our YouTubes. Uh, so yeah, just on our YouTubes, yeah. all the 4Ks. Okay. And then if you. Uh, oh, yes. If we want to introduce ourselves. What camera am I looking at? Oh, yeah. Let's get this right. Uh, Joe Neat, executive producer. Mm. I'm Mike Chapman, design director. John McFarlane, community video manager. Emma Bridal, engagement manager. Uh, I'm Craig Duncan. I'm the number one fan. I didn't realise this was being filmed. (laughs) (laughs) But it's great to be here with my favourite developer. (laughs) I love how you have to ask what camera... We're on episode 14 and you're still having to And Craig's finally here. He's here. Oh, should we actually point out who Craig is just in case people don't know? Yeah, why not? Uh, so I'm the studio head, so okay. I run Rare. Uh, so I'm basically here to make sure Mike and Joe don't say anything they shouldn't this close to launch. I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. Not guaranteed. <laughs> My legs are long like enough to doesn't it, now? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I keep being invited onto other people's podcasts, and I figured as our own studio has an awesome podcast, it was about time I showed up here as well. Great way to start the year. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Yeah, we had a uh, really intense finish to the year and got a ton of stuff done but yeah it was it's good it's good to be back it's start as well though hasn't it like, yeah. it's like just come back in a good like, way though yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it's great yeah. I mean, the whole team's just come back and just really energised everyone's had a good Christmas and just hit the ground running so it's great yeah it's amazing so we're going to have a slightly different layout to what we usually have today um, and also, the, the traditional thing would be to ask if anybody's had a good Christmas and New Year, but I'm totally going to skip that because literally no one's someone, interested. To let someone us. asked what Christmas presents we got. It was submitted fan question. Mm. I did. <laughs> I was just like, no. I don't want to steal, but I did get a nice little uh, small treasure chest that had three different flavours of rum in from, from my wife. Mm. That's pretty good. Just that good. to show how my work just bleeds, bleeds into... into yeah. I was like, pants. hey. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on. Sounds <laughs> uh, like a newsreader, aren't you? Sitting at your desk, there's actually nothing on beneath. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we had to get him some underwear because it was getting a bit awkward. Yeah, so. Don't watch the extended cut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so um, obviously we want to thank everybody in the community um, from last year with your help in the technical alpha and run-ups mm-hmm. to technical alpha and obviously your continued support for everybody who's in the uh, Pioneers program and our deck cans and everyone. So yeah, just thank you very much for that year. It's been amazing uh, seeing everyone come together and everyone help out in that technical alpha. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's community section. <laughs> <laughs> Three thank you. Three version done. today. Yeah. yeah, I think just to echo what John said, I mean, it's really important all the feedback we get. And I know um, particularly our, I don't know how much we're going to go into the tech alpha. I know you did it in the... Uh, in the forums after, but it was our biggest ever technical alpha. Mm-hmm. We got a ton of good feedback. We had some problems we had when we hit scale, which is good. Uh, and we tried to respond to those and we learned a ton. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it was really, really, really awesome. Awesome. So, like, we're just going to go straight into some of the things that we missed from October through to now. And the first of which was we were at the, the Game Awards. 
we, we not physically. There. Well, we yeah, weren't there. Yeah. Yeah. We should yeah. have been there in yeah. hindsight. Yeah. yeah. Although I've got a new bar of kind of terrible interviews to now go and beat. Um, in terms of uh, <laughs> oh, what inappropriate oh. things can I say in an interview? Yeah. When a certain interview at the Game Awards, that was pretty special. That um, was yes, special. it was. Uh, yeah. Talking about an interview you did? No, 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 no. no, no, no. But there was an interview there in terms of like. Uh, was there? Yeah, okay. it was pretty funny. The way out guy. I'll just chop it. Did you not see it? I don't think I did. Even I saw it, and I don't watch anything. Okay, I'll go and see You it. have to go and watch it. I'll tonight. go seek that. Yeah, yeah, just okay. the Google Game yeah. Awards. Just like Jeff Kelly. Well, just like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't us. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. Okay. Um, but yeah, amazing to show up there and to have our date announced in that way in the trailer mm-hmm. that was put together with the amazing yeah. chicken, best chicken ever. Mm. Um, uh, like, 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 honestly, like my highlight of the year that was that chicken cameo in that in that video. And how many how many attempts at watching? Here it? we go. Did it take? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, like, like just before the chicken appears, like there's the explosion, right? And and so I knew that the chicken. Was responding oh, to the explosion. I, that's literally just clicked for me yeah. now. Um, but then it was on about the eighth watch when I saw the explosion off, off in the distance on the horizon. Is that why the chicken the goes like? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, re- <laughs> <laughs> he's reacting yeah. to it. So I knew yeah. it was reacting, but what I had because I was so focused on the chicken's reaction, I didn't spot in the distance because I can't look at two things. But, the, but the funny thing is, we've, <laughs> we I think we're in that room back there reviewing the video. Yeah. We've all been in there guffawing, laughing because of that, that cut of it. Yeah. You've laughed and you weren't laughing along with it. No, I was just, just laughing at the chicken's the chicken. expression, yeah. Just and then I, no, but like, I was so proud I spotted it that I then took a screenshot and I sent it to them. <laughs> so so we're going, we're going, we're going, just going like, I'll just buy this, guys. You guys are genius. And they were just like, that's the joke. It wasn't meant to be him. That's the whole setup. <laughs> when did you spot him, I think I spotted it on my first... First run through. Let's go, of course. Yeah. Well, I've only just done it, and you put it up in the all hands and yes. explained it, and I still didn't get it. And I was on the front row. So. <laughs> he hears it. He yeah. hears it. That I knew, and then but I like, didn't know it was in the back. I just thought it was a funny chicken. <laughs> See, that was, that was my level too. I was like, what did you do? And in the all hands, it's 60 foot high on the roof as well. No, it's good, no, but it, it's good to know our animals are so characterful. Yes. That's true. That they are. And they are you awesome. did watch it on a massive TV, like where the explosion was probably about the size of your head and the actual thing. It's like, it's your, the fact that you didn't spot it was but like, It's just impressive. got so many levels. And That's it. It's always yeah. something you can repeat it yeah. and rewatch it. Just it, was, it was a great video. Yeah. It was. Absolutely great trial. That was uh, Daryl's idea for the chicken. Well yeah. done, Daryl. <laughs> um, so obviously that was that was quite a while in the plan and we knew that the release date was going to come um, at the Game Awards for mm-hmm. quite a little while. We did. Um, and it was obviously, it was quite a challenge to try and slot that into 60 seconds. We had 60 seconds to try and round up everything as well as put some new teases in there. Yeah. Um, well, we put a good tease, tease on the forum as well, didn't we? In terms of the, of yeah. the oh, announcement. Yeah. Of the release date uh, yeah, we did. Well. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. And I think some people some people got the date, but not necessarily what the date yeah. meant. Yeah. So we had a was it a, was a pocket watch open with yeah. seven and twelve. Yes. Pointed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we so, give away more clues? Just well, no. There was the um, so there was the pocket watch, and then there was the uh, person waving yeah. in the back. Emoting. Yeah. So you were trying to distract them with the person doing the emote, so that they didn't look at what was on the um, the watch itself. So, but we didn't put any more clues in apart from that. I don't think. Didn't we? Okay. I no, think. I think just three days before we went, we're at the Game Awards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like, it was awesome like to see it and finally being able to talk about the date and like yes. so many questions on yeah. Like, on, uh, but I, so I think this goes for everything on on the project and on the game in development, which is every like there's there's a sequence to the way we want to do stuff. So we want to get people excited, and then obviously you know we've been asked about the date for a year. And we've had a rough idea, and then obviously as you get closer mm-hmm. to development, that hones in and hones in, and then we feel it's good to talk about it. And we we have to talk about it in a way that will be, for the players that are along the journey with us, will be just another piece of information right down to someone brand new that might have seen that trailer for the mm-hmm. first time on Sea of Thieves. So. Yeah, and we've definitely seen a big influx of people into our community mm. and, yeah. you know, just a general awareness and buzz and stuff since we, we showed there. We did the progression stuff, like there's a real kind of growth and explosion isn't there mm. so, mm-hmm. which is fun and a lovely segue there into the the next thing we announced was the progression uh system one screen. week later wasn't it yeah later, yeah no exactly. no that was a that was a great example of where you know we've done podcasts like this and we've answered questions and we've kind of like done it like wink wink like knowingly like answering a question kind of cryptically but kind of confirming it at the same time and we did that with merchants we've kind of done it with the animals but it was nice to 
kind of wrap up all of those little clues we've been given across the last like couple of podcasts and actually just put it all there in that progression video, like pretty much announce some new features and how it's all going to tie together. So there's a lot of that stuff we kind of keep close to our chest, right? The whole trading company system, then being the fronted by these characters in the world and then the different play styles and how they're all going to play off together. It was just nice to spend some time and put it all in the video together. Like this is, you know, what are you going to be doing in Sea of Thieves? And like, it's there in that video. These are the things you're tangibly going to be doing in this world. And this is how you're going to progress. This is how you should think about voyages in the game, how you should think about progress. It was just great to do it all in one go. Yeah, it's like and it's show off features running. Yes. Actually, yes. With, vid yeah. with video yeah. footage yeah. all yeah. in one go. The, the trading companies were actually on the website for a full week. No one spotted them. Yeah. No, I think a couple of people did. They but did. They were just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, um, but the kind of the show and tell philosophy, right? You were mm. kind of alluding mm. to there. But, but there's still... There's a bunch of stuff still that we haven't shown in that video that we haven't kind of talked about in terms of like the finer detail of some of that stuff and some of the new features and new elements. Yep. So there is, you know, between now and launch, there's still more to show, yes. more to talk about, keep more watching, to tell. Keep watching, keep listening, yeah. and it's like, still more. Yeah, and it's, I know it can be frustrating for our most engaged community, yeah. right? Because they've been with us for however long, a year and a half, you know, right? And or since the start of the alpha. And, um, and, so they've heard us say a lot of <laughs> the same stuff at the different shows and in different videos and stuff. Um, but we have to, you have to balance the kind of thing, don't you? With speaking to the kind of broader audience yeah. and showing awareness and showing things at the right time and also doing that tease and doing those things of like trying to bring your community along with you. And, and it's, it's quite a hard thing to balance, actually, mm -hmm. like to find the right This thing. is the information yeah. overload as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, and like you say, whereas people that have been on the journey with us since the start, can, can cope with all the information because they're living and breathing the game like we yeah. are. Whereas if you're brand new to Sea of Thieves, like think of the Game Awards and we were selective about that, like, hey, let's surprise someone with a new trailer. It's got a wider audience because yeah. part of our job is obviously making the game and making yeah. that awesome, but we're also trying to make as many people aware of Sea of Thieves okay. and, and uh, you know, make Sea of Thieves a success for Rare. So there will be people that would have seen us talk about the street day in that trailer might have been the first exposure they've ever had to Sea mm -hmm. of Thieves. Yeah. yeah. And then it's Definitely. like, okay, how do you then bring them into, like, oh, here's Sea of Thieves progression. As Joe said, there'll be other steps between now and launch. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I think, I think the original plan was to talk a bit, bit more abstract in terms of the progression system, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Let's just talk about the systems and how they interact. But I think the more we talked about that, that reveal and that video, it became... I guess more apparent that it would be better to talk about it more in terms of the quests themselves yeah. and the quests and how they serve that progression system. So I think initially we wanted to be like, hold more stuff back yeah, and we yeah. thought, you know, let's let's show the system off in terms of what players will be doing across those play styles. What I love is that, that like, we got such a positive reaction, particularly about you know, playing without boundaries, not putting barriers between friends mm -hmm. and... Some fairly complex design things like voyage voting mm. is quite new, and yeah. you yeah. explained it, and everyone's like, "Ah, mm. like, of course, we'll pick yeah. a voyage to go on." And um, so, a lot of the concepts we talked about there that even we were like, "Hey, let's hope we've explained this the right yeah. way." You did a masterful job. Well, thank you. Um, it was good editing, wasn't it? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I, wa I watched it live. You know what I mean, it's like the one chance <laughs> on air. <laughs> and saying, "Mike, you did a great job." <laughs> You, deli you delivered. <laughs> Shut down in flames, thanks to you. I wouldn't have any other I didn't actually see the video until after the stream because I hadn't had time, so I went home because we had it on loop on Mixer. Just got home and just had it on loop in the living room. Mm -hmm. You were one of our extra viewers. I was one, I was one extra sure. viewer. Yeah. But I, I was genuinely quite nervous about that because that was the mm -hmm. first time we've done something like that from this studio that we've organised, mm. that we'd put together. Yeah. That, you know, um, you know it's, it's really easy to just go to a show like E3 or go to Gamescom and just be put in a room and just answer yeah. questions from press. You guys are doing press. You yeah. guys are doing press. <laughs> yeah. 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 But actually to go, no, this is what we want. You know, we want to talk about the progression systems for our game direct to our community and mm -hmm. then take questions direct from our community. So, you know, the, the video we were showing, that was a new way of us showing stuff mm -hmm. like, um, uh, and then doing that Q&A and then hoping that everything worked or knowing it would work <laughs> because of the talents of our, <laughs> of our team. But no, but just all of those yeah. things. And, and, stuff goes wrong. With yeah, stuff. And, you, yeah. and you just wanted it to go really well so because you want to do more of those kind of things right yeah. yeah and like you want it you want it to go well and you want it to be received positively and so you could you have the confidence to go yeah this was the right thing to do let's do, let's do it again um and, and think about the game when it's live as well you know the more comfortable we get with live streaming and live broadcasting you know we can talk about future features and yeah. make it a bit more q a um but for, for game dev i don't think people realize how much of this stuff we're going hey let's just go try this 
Yeah. Like, let's try doing a podcast. Let's try doing a live stream. Mm-hmm. Let's try, try doing some developer videos. Yeah. Well, I remember when we first employed John back in the back in the day. Oh, yeah, but no, but we were really like we were. Enjoying. Well, we, we yeah, <laughs> but it was like we we were like we kind of want to record and document this the development of this game. Yeah, Nobody I remember that conversation. Oh, yeah. I remember. Why, yeah. It was like, but we should just we should just find someone to do it and we'll figure it out. Right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know, your background was very much in game videos and kind of streaming, stuff. and so it was like, okay, let's just get you in and start filming stuff. And how bad we were as a team. So I'm just having flashbacks. For being there, filmed. Oh, God. <laughs> that was that was oh. awkward. Do you want it like we just found, John we, in the corner of a meeting and everyone's just we like. We found air footing. Like, yeah. Halfway through a design meeting, yeah. tripod turns up. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to get Is that what you call me? Yeah. I think they <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but <laughs> I think that was the concern about the whole thing, though, wasn't it? It's like you start throwing cameras around. Yes, people, yeah, yeah. people will just act abnormally. They did. They? Yeah. they did. Yeah, they did, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. But it was. I remember because John was the only person on the video team at that point, right? And so yeah. he had to try and like you'd be on one camera, you'd set another one up over here, and you'd end up cutting between the different cameras, trying to show a meeting. I'm sure, have you still got the video of that? So one? I only had one camera. Yeah. Oh really? Was so it? So it was one camera, uh, okay. and I would set up. I would do reverse shots and try and create a conversation yeah. from a create a conversation yeah. that didn't exist. Yeah. But yeah, I think the videos are still on there. Of, yeah. like, it was the one of us trying to pitch a terrible game name idea to Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get on with Sea of Thieves, and we had a big list and all this kind of stuff, but it was the it was the way you cut and edited back it and was, forth in the video, which was, was genuinely good. amazing. It was good. Yeah. Odd pitch, yeah. and there was like a deadly silence, and you look at Craig's face just I, like, mm. <laughs> and it was it was literally that like was an great. episode of The Office. The Office, like, it was so awkward. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah so yeah. like everything, you, didn't you, do that. you find your feet and you improve. Yeah. Yes. But, but then you know that led to the Phil Kudo video that we did at the start, it led yeah, to the yes. broadcast lab yeah. that Sierra shot, yeah. Indeed. leads yeah. to some of this. Yeah, even the other day looking back at like we had built a tavern upstairs, it was a much smaller, more yeah. cramped tavern and then we, we decided before we even went live with any of this stuff, like external videos that we'd properly go for it and build this main tavern like yeah. down in the broadcast lab and probably go all out on like yeah. what was the future of the game in broadcasting. Yep. And, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. watching and sharing videos yeah but it was just like, the awkwardness of us on camera to begin with and stuff to where we are now and the same will apply to our live streams we'll just get better at doing those and kind of everything it's um but no, it went well went well and it was it was just interesting i mean like i said you guys were in this space but there was a ton of people off camera I was here they're yeah, yeah. furiously trying to get questions from four different channels over <laughs> to guys. sitting watching twitch sitting watching mixer yeah just Seeing what what all the uh, all the questions were coming in, making sure it was all still working. So yeah, yeah it was great. It was, it was awesome. a good learning experience for us, wasn't it? And yeah. like looking forward to doing more of that kind of stuff in the future. Oh, totally, like, talking yeah, directly yeah. to our players. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think like, it's been it. such a like seeing the difference in our audience grow over just that small period of time, and even just the difference in the amount of questions <clears> we get in for for the podcast now. Um, we are like. More than tenfold have like mm-hmm. uh, uh, the amount of questions. Yeah, it was here, hundreds, so. wasn't it? When I was looking. Yeah, we're yeah. like we're, we're well thousand. over a thousand. Yeah, like oh, so wow. Compared to our usual thirty or forty, is quite a difference. So, and, yeah. and we're going to do them one by one. We're going to do them one by one. We don't need to go home. It's fine. So, like linking to that, we also had our actual tech alpha to do with progression. Yeah. yeah, it was an interesting Friday, I think, for some some of the team, uh, especially around the kind of services <laughs> side and the community <laughs> side, right? Like just um yeah, there was definitely some there were some issues to begin with, right? In terms mm-hmm. of the there was there was a couple of issues that kind of compounded it, but but basically the amount of kind of messages being sent by our services were just getting overloaded mm-hmm. and it meant that people were getting errors coming in and stuff. And so yeah, late Friday night we kind of we actually were all on a call. I was kind of at home and some yeah, people were at the studio. Yeah, conference at nine thirty. Yeah, yeah, and it was like okay. Like, what did we do? What's the situation? Yeah, what's the situation? What's yep. the thing? And so we made the call on that Friday night to turn all the telemetry off, which is all of the data we get from the game about what people are doing. Yep. And so it was literally like... <laughs> <laughs> and you were like on the call, and it was like, has that made a difference? And like, you know, Rob, Rob is somewhere else going... Rob was just there, and things are going, up. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then it was like, okay, so should we try turning them back on one by one and see what happens? <laughs> 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 Flick. And it, was, uh, and, I, and it was quite a tense kind of moment. But like, you know, everyone's just like... And, but I just couldn't get out of my head that it was just like being in the Jurassic Park control room turning on the fences. You said that on the call. I, I know, I said it on the call and I was what? like, is it, is it too soon to make a joke, joke about it? Yeah. Everyone in the room but, loved it. I didn't get it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it worked. It was perfect because the tension was... Yeah. Uh, but then everyone fell about.
out. But it genuinely did feel like that. It we ate like, like yeah. half the snack cupboard. We yeah. Just <laughs> binging chocolate. Yeah. But then as so so that kind of that is s- smooth <laughs> smooth things out right for the um yeah uh, for the, for the weekend and then over the weekend we started turning on a lot of telemetry again. So we managed to gather still a lot of data. Yeah. Um, which was good because we've yeah. been you know we've been having lots of discussions around that right. Yeah. I mean no, it's been good to. We, we thankfully we've been able to salvage quite a lot of the data from that play test around where players got in terms of their progression, like how far they'd play, how long they'd play before they're able to purchase those milestones. And again, looking at looking at kind of feedback across Reddit and across the forums, we've been able to kind of piece together a pretty good picture. And that's led to, I guess, a lot of the things we've actioned since then. Yeah. So kind of like the voyages that we have, the kind of the balance, the gold economy, all that stuff we're we're kind of we've come back in the new year. A lot of that stuff's already in progress, but we're kind of actioning a lot of that. So it's been an invaluable process. Mm -hmm. I guess their ability to run at scale as well, that's something that we're looking at. Yeah, I think that that was the point I was just going to make is I know we talk about these playtests is like, hey, come and play CFDs, come Mm -hmm. and get involved, give us your feedback. But really there's a double meaning to that, which is like, hey, we're actually going to put more people through our pipes and matchmaking and services and scale than we've ever done before. And we kind of want things to break or we at least want to push all of our services and capacity to limit so we can find out where the problems are because that, you know, these games are super complex and um, the more problems we can find now or in development, obviously the smoother we hope launch will be. Um, and the closed beat is exactly that as well, right? Exactly. Set, same yeah. set of goals, right? Mm-hmm. Is that a nice, nice segue? That was oh, the next one. I was, <laughs> was going to tell a technical officer. <laughs> so, you know, it, it is awesome people can come and play and it's awesome we can get people playing Sea of Thieves, but also it helps us a massive yeah. amount to see, yeah. see where our uh, seams are. Did you guys play in that test? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Because, yeah. Well, it was the first time I got to actually play the progression stuff because I'd never played it here. Mm. So I teamed up with two of our super fans and we had a fourth and he only communicated using non-verbals. And again, I'd never played with someone who wasn't just testing it. Yeah. Ah, cool. And he messaged us after and said, he's German, he's not very confident in his English, but he still had a great time because he could still participate. And uh, I got to murder Craig. Yeah. I mean, I was... <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a bounty quest, not that. Oh, um, ah, right. Oh. Okay, yeah, I thought you meant you were the chance Excellent. of encountering no, in the I world. I kept oh, doing cool. them over and over going, I want my own name, I want my own name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, the um, just so people know, like my experience of that tech alpha playtest, I was in the people that had a problem for the first couple of days. Yeah. So right. like, I couldn't get into the game. So, of course, while everyone else is... Put in forum. I'm sending my own mails to engineers, going, "Hey, this is <laughs> this is popping up. I can't wrong. fix this." Yeah. Uh, and then I got in, and then like I wasn't getting the right information for the entitlements about stuff I'd bought. And so, yeah. again, for me, just as we sat down, I mean, we sat down. I think the morning we're maybe two days into it. Yeah. Trying to think back in, on the Monday yeah. morning, yeah. Uh, and we all sat down, and it was at least. I mean, the good thing there, and again, probably what we all do is at least we then had our own first-hand experiences, yeah. and yeah. the people around say, "Hey, it was fine. Hey, I had problems matchmaking. Hey, I yeah. had problems with yeah. entitlement." Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, and we like talking about our next steps, like you said, closed beta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, so who who's coming into this, and like, uh, so all our founders. So basically anyone who joined the Insider program before our December the 1st cutoff is cool. Is now a Sea Thieves founder and they will get into the closed beta, no purchase necessary. We're bringing them along with us and anyone who has uh, pre-ordered the game can join as well. Yeah. So um, we'll have a nice mix, I think, between players who've played before, players who haven't, all sort of coming in together. Do we have a cutoff date for that? Like, is there? A- no, you can continue to pre-order through the closed beta and you will still get access so if you cool. see your friends playing and you want in on that action you can join in halfway through and am i right in here and you have to redeem the black dog you pack? need to redeem the black dog pack if you've pre-ordered digitally that will be done for you you'll get a nice little pop-up just telling you that it's ready to download um otherwise your retailer should have provided a code for you Sweet. but that'll be redeemed at launch for the game no you need to redeem that that code and now. it gets you into and the B- basically beta. redeeming the black dog pack that's your entry into the ah, okay. beta for anyone so who's confused. That kind of gives you the confirmation. Yeah, yeah. That'll trigger it. You and get it... the pack at launch, if that's what you're Yes, saying. that's yes. what I was, yes. that's yes. The yes. I was trying to clarify. Yes, yes sure. So, Stuff uh, we'll be waiting for you. Yeah, launch. you'll get a little message. We'll send you through a message when it's available to yeah. download the day before. And um, the big thing that I know you're excited about during this is <laughs> N- NDA. Is what, sorry? NDA. N- NDA, indeed, yes. yes. So, yeah, so the NDA will not apply for the closed yes. beta period. So... Anybody that's in the closed beta can basically go nuts on, on you know, Mixer, on Twitch, oh, on YouTube, Screenshot. on screenshots, on game clips, on 
like writing like really ridiculous fan fiction and, and embedding screenshots into it. Like go do whatever you want <gasps> with footage. Your comic book where they screenshot. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or try and do some um, like red versus blue. Um, what do you call it? Machinima. Yeah, machinima stuff. Do what do whatever you want. We've we've, we've had this great. conversation like a hundred times, and it still makes me, it gives me goosebumps yeah. just even hearing you say that now. Yeah. Like, hey, everyone's just going to stream and go for it. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm just not going to play that whole weekend. I'm just. I, just, I know you just be pouring it over. I've yeah. told my team basically that's all you're doing for the whole yeah. time is everybody's on YouTube and we're just going to look at it all. Yeah, and, well, we've, and we'll share we'll great. share some of our favourites. So if you've got something cool, let us know because we'll yeah. want to share it. Yeah, well, we're just we're getting down in the um, lobby of our building of the rare building, right? Oh, we're getting yeah. a, yes. a kind of a four way screen, which is with players creating stories together written above it, which was you know the original kind of pitch of the game. Yeah, and we're going to be just having live streams of the game that like you know in our in our um, reception area, um, data that's live as well, yeah. and that's just yeah. going to be. You know, from from kind of this point onwards, right? And mm-hmm. you know, whenever we're allowing players to stream, and whenever they're playing, we'll have data up and streams. So, so, if you're streaming, you could be streaming onto the walls of Rare, and we'll be watching. Certainly, yeah. I think a lot of streams. We'll watch a lot of streams at work, won't we? Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. That'd be like, great. It is. It's going to be like, amazing. Like, and yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing things that there's a chance of happening that I've never had happen to mm. me because. Yep. Um, you know, in terms of all the different mechanics, like the firing out of cannons and things being fired, like, you know, I want to see, like, somebody fire themselves out of a cannon so hot and then they're going to come down land and just shoot a shark just before they hit it or something and manage to <laughs> one-shot kill it or something. Things like that of just that are totally random and just can happen yeah. Yeah. and that, that show the possibilities and that really make your mind explode, I think, when you see those kind of clips and stuff. Like, you get a sense a lot of that stuff is happening, but people yeah. are so respectful of the NDA currently. Yes. They're so careful they about sharing these really, stories. They have really, really good so. and we, we appreciate Oh I, yeah. yeah, I love yeah. all the Completely. messages I get when they're, when they're like they're on. You get messages direct to your yeah. kind of yeah. um, inbox on the forums or on um, mm. Xbox Live. Xbox Live, yeah. yeah. Hey, here's a link. Like, get it down. Yeah. yeah. Like, so our <laughs> team, for once, will be able to watch the streams without saying, "Sorry, stop it." <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah. not, we we honestly, relax just and can just put it on. And yeah. I think you're right there. It has been the exception. I mean, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. 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 Most people have honoured the NDA almost to, and, and again, first time we've ever done this, but to a point of confusion, yes. of like not knowing, like, hey, not I've had an awesome it. play experience. Can I talk about it? Yeah, yeah you can talk yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm under NDA. Yeah. And then you'd see someone start to talk about it on Twitter and three or four people would jump in and go, hey, we've been on Reddit, right? Sorry? We've been on Reddit saying, oh, no, it is okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we had someone fr- uh, from a group who's nominated for a Grammy email us and say, hey, I'm doing an interview pre-Grammys. I love Sea of Thieves. But it's under NDA. Am I allowed to talk about it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. The creativity of players, you're putting it into their hands, right? And like whether it's an emergent thing that happens to them or it's something that they go out to engineer mm. and to create cool content. And so many people have th- have been saying that on Twitter, you know, like a lot of our fans, like Jeffren, I know, wants to mm-hmm. do a kind of machinima thing. And then, yeah. you know, um, uh, Ron Norris has got big plans as well, him and his team, the Rum Doms going out. Like, there's so many people that just want to do That's it. Right. People are setting um, up races and competitions and battles and treasure mm-hmm. hunting contests yeah. and all yeah. stuff. And like it's, that. it's also the cooperative nature as well. And again, to, just to give the mixer guys a plug with the co-stream and stuff, you know, yeah. mm. again, our game is, is a cooperative game at its heart. It's an adventure game. Like, and having people... Something that we've done in our broadcast lab, streaming from multiple perspectives, like two people on the island while there's two people on the ship. And Mm -hmm. I just think that stuff, I mean, again, like co-streaming, co-streaming for the win, like us, I want to see it, I want to see a crew, I want to see all the different perspectives, like, I think it's cool. You know, you're just so happy. It's nice. Yeah, it's good. It's good. He's it's just good. saying they're grinning. It's about three hours ago, we watched that original pitch video we did for for that. Like, yes. So, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is it the fake fun. one where people are looking on tablets? Going, yeah, going, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, jo- and John McMurtry's like, pressing buttons. Nice. Oh. <laughs> like, like, yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Post stream, it is cool, though. It, it is. is. Yeah, it's very so cool. cool. Yeah. It's very cool. We were, we were so on it in 2015. That was it? October 2015 was that video. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So next kind of section moving on is what each of you been up to um, during this like October through now. <laughs> like what, yeah. what are you up to now, basically? Yeah. Well, it's so since coming back from uh, from Christmas, like which flew by the kind of Christmas break. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, uh, it's really been about just really narrowing and focusing down on our launch plans. Like still with an eye on on post launch, and you know, and I have to kind of look at both, but really just going. Across the team, this is the stuff that we've got to deliver. Um, like, how do we make it happen, and how do we drive efficiency in the team, and kind of just 
un- unlock the, the the ability to add as much cool stuff to that launch version of the game as possible, yeah. right? And you're probably yeah. going to say exactly the same. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> so how are we going to make this so different? <laughs> yeah. But but that is the focus, right? Yeah. And it's like um, it's been like just in the last like four days, right? Before we did the podcast, like just um, that that energy and that yeah. relentless focus from from so many people across the team, you just feel it, don't you? And mm. every like. Because we announced the, the date, which is cool, and it's cool for our players, and it's like, but it's suddenly like it's a bit of a reality check for everyone across the team, isn't it? It's like, okay, we need like, we 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 are now changing how our behaviour because mm-hmm. we've been just well, we've been hitting dates and milestones and stuff, but now it's the launch of the game. Now right? it's and it's X weeks. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, weeks it literally it, is exactly. right, and yeah. it's just like, and we've got you know we've got the beta, and then we've got other stuff coming between now and launch, but and they're all super important, but like, but they're all about delivering that number one, like you know the the, the sorry the yeah the day one launch of this game and delivering as much stuff as we can. And but still being stable, still like you know all of that scaling yeah. stuff yeah. that we do in terms of the amount of people we can have playing, and all of that stuff is so important because we want to come out the gates and everything to work, right? <laughs> like that stuff's yeah. as important. Um, and and then you know we'll we want to be very reactive around launch in terms of yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. focusing on feedback and all that kind of stuff, but then transition into the okay, what's our first update? Yeah. What's the next one and stuff? But yeah, so it's all that's where my head is at right now, and yeah. it's going to be just awesome but also exhausting and tiring and, and everything else but like yeah you just get filled with this energy don't you by it it's like yeah i mean i was just like just thinking that i think we've all like mine's very similar my my, aunt, yeah. my answer to that but i think we I think we've i mean for some time had a very clear picture of what we want our experience to be on march 20th um inclusive of what's in the progression video and all the stuff we've yet to announce mm-hmm. but i think like this time is so critical where it's not only about delivering the features it's about delivering the features that are you know a high quality that reflects the rest of the content in CFDs. But at the same time, we've done these uh, tests. We've done the, the progression test uh, before Christmas. So we're also trying to get as much of that feedback into the existing features mm-hmm. as well. So I just think it's it's just a really energising time where even though you that date gives you absolute clarity of focus of what is the important thing we should be discussing today, what how far have I got to get through my to-do list today, I think it's still... You feel well. You feel that buzz around the team because everyone's just, yeah, March twenty, March twenty, March twenty. Everyone, all everyone's thinking. Yeah. But I then, I'm, I guess I'm getting to the point now where I'm, I'm really starting to look forward to getting to really detailed conversations about like what's immediately coming after launch and beyond. I think that's I'm starting to feel that excitement for having those discussions. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like our roadmap is known to launch, right? Like mm-hmm. We know what we're going to do, right? We know what we have to go yep. and deliver. Um, and, but what's, I think what's the most interesting thing for me is about how all of the mechanics collide. Mm. And so each of the things you do has impacts on other different parts of the game, like the ship encounters and the visibility of ships yes. and the frequency of encounters yep. all impact really, like, you know, on how long people will play and the fun that they have and like all of the way that this works in this multiplayer world and that all mm-hmm. of the decisions you make and the things you change and what you do with the progression systems can impact yeah. that, right? You know, you want that progression to drive you, but not to be the only thing that you're doing and following yeah, and stuff. It's like, yeah, I think we I mean we've tried I'm trying to think of an analogy here or an example, but like like world design, progression, kind of economy balance. We've tried like with the levers in different positions. Like what if we do this? What what does that? How does that show up in a mm-hmm. test? And then now let's try it another way. And then okay, we've got a better idea of what the answer is there. And I think as we the next kind of couple of weeks as we kind of progress towards March 20th, it's about bringing all those pieces together. It's like right now, now we kind of know just how it should be. Like with shipping counters, ship visibility, the amount of outposts in the world, kind of the world design, just like. Again, it just right for the release of the game. So yeah. very exciting. Yeah, and one one other thing, actually, just wanted to like just on the close beta itself, um, like the the challenge. <coughs> it's not something I've, like I've definitely been up like I guess doing this since October, whenever we did the podcast. But the kind of the design of what should be in that close beta, mm-hmm. um, because Craig, you talked about it about the goals of a close yeah. beta. Like yeah, one yeah. is the scalability of our mm-hmm. services and of our game, and can we can we keep it stable and and um, grow with the amount of people we've got in, and what can we learn from that perspective? And that's you know that is one of the key goals of the yeah. of the close yeah, beta. Yeah, it's as much a test for us as it is yeah. getting yeah. people to play. Yeah. 
It's also there's like a number of changes that we've been making based off the progression test that we did um, in December. So as many of those changes that we can get in, yes. so we can learn again yeah. from from people playing um, the game. But also the the NDA lift is about trying to you know we'll give one giving our our kind of most committed and engaged player base the opportunity to do that because they've been clamoring to share mm -hmm. stuff and they'll so stream yeah. they'll be yeah. streaming and making videos first yeah. Yeah. which yeah. is yeah. important yeah. 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 it is yeah. and what that does for us as well is it helps drive awareness of cf thieves to a broader audience to bring yeah. more people um towards us which is super important them for us telling too. all their friends yeah. about us and so the challenge for us was about how do we like what is the right kind of feature set for something like yeah. that and if we were making a kind of a another kind of multiplayer game or, or shooter or something that maybe has a campaign mode and then it has just some multiplayer kind of maps or mm. something then you'd go well we'll just do one game mode and we'll do two maps right and that's cool and then for us it's like okay what's our yeah. equivalent in What's an emergent version? open yeah. 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 open world yeah. game freedom of, of to go where you want yeah. is absolutely key yeah like, and you yeah and you kind of want to show different. What is the core of Sea of Thieves? Um, yeah. What's that core magic of the emergent world and the, the multiplayer and um, and some of the progression stuff? And, and, but you also want to leave some of the kind of other elements of the game so that when we kind of move forward yeah. that we show that in more detail yeah, as yeah. well. So yeah. you're not just kind of splurging it it's, all at once. It's giving them what else? Like, a yeah. taste of the world but keeping some things up our sleeve so yes. that on day one you don't go, I've seen it. Exactly, already. yeah. So it's yeah. a nice balance. It's a crafted experience. Yeah. But I think to, to set expectations, you know, it'll be it'll be enough of the game that we can learn, but it will be probably closer to the progression test than it will be to the final product. Yeah, like, totally. That's, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. if you imagine those things on a scale, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's good because it is a like it's it's a demo. It's yeah. going to going to be there for a few days. Um, I mean, I guess a beta test is kind of like a demo. I yeah. suppose. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. It's, it's, people, it's people's yeah. opportunity to come and play it. I, I think we'll learn a lot about how people stream and what content people yeah. create as well because yes. we've never we've never been through that cycle. No. Um, I mean, not mean not to name any games that do it differently, but like this is truly a closed beta. Mm -hmm. This is yes. not just it in name only. This is a closed beta. We've still got things we want to learn. We still want to look at the data. Yeah. We're still going to like... Um, we've gone through that iteration based on the data we got from the progression test and we want to see test again, see what the data is, and then we'll use that from closed beta to finalise the game for yeah. for launch. So it's it is a closed beta, right? Yeah. yeah. But there are even th there are some things that we test in there that when you test them in an alpha and you test them with yeah. your kind of insider yeah. audience kind of under NDA, you're like, okay, cool, we can put this stuff in and we feel good about this and learning from it and stuff. Yeah. But then you also look at those features and go, do we want those yet to be streaming, or do we actually do we want to go away and take some of that yeah. feedback we've got from players and make improvements before we kind of open it up to the wider world? So yeah, all of those things feed into your decision making around a, yeah. around the kind of beta. So and I think for us it's a continuous process because we're looking at all these parts all the mm. time whereas obviously for the progression test and the alpha and the technical alpha and the beta it's it's a very moment in time yeah so yeah. we've almost got to go in our continuous process where do we lop stuff off and go okay we think this is a good close beta yeah uh, big sign though i can't literally can't wait <laughs> what have you been awesome. up to well, I have been very similar, I suppose. Uh, to, We're all going to say the same thing, aren't we? Like, yeah. It's all that plan running up to up to launch. It's about getting that as much visibility around the game as possible, and it's mm -hmm. whether it's tying it into the closed beta or like or launch. Really, it's it's also about a, a time for us, I think, as well to like look over what we've done already, and mm -hmm. uh, we've been running a YouTube channel for almost two years now. Like, and it's like, um, like. Right. Like running that and looking back at the weekly videos we've been doing on there and saying to ourselves, right, we've got this new audience who probably hasn't really gone yeah. back through that archive of footage. Um, what do we need to remind people? Because I think like yeah. you get caught in a bubble like sometimes here where you're like, oh, I've, I know that you four people can raise the capstan in the large ship and I know that they can turn the sails and raise and lower the sails. Is it? But someone who just joined us last week doesn't know that. Yeah. Mm. Um, so we just need to keep... For, for some of our core, we want to, in one hand, continue to talk to our core audience that are there mm -hmm. and who have been there since the beginning and try and give them new kind of like uh, insights into what's going on in the studio, as well as talk to those new like players and, and kind of yeah. excite them about what's coming. Yeah, that's me. Mine's the same. Just with commu <laughs> community, it's what stories have we got left to tell before launch? How are we going to do it? How are we reaching people? Are we in the right places to reach our audience? Gathering feedback, 
in getting ready for we've we've never built a game like this before so for the community team this is some of it is completely new ground and like when we have suddenly loads of streams of videos on i think we're all going to be a bit shell 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 shocked um so yeah lots to look forward to i think yeah i think i think my purview is probably a little bit different because i guess rare's my game my project um (laughs) no no not at all um and obviously, you know, supporting the team to, 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 uh, for, to help them as much as they can. Uh, I spoke to Phil the other day. He's super happy. He's seen the progression video. So, again, double compliment if you want to get in. Um, <laughs> Jump yeah, in now. Phil, Phil, was, <laughs> Phil was saying, hey, love the way the game's shaping up. So he and I had a chat. He said, How much was it to hire John Oliver? That was yeah, the kind of question. Yeah, hope the... Uh, <laughs> what a, Expensive. Um, he loves the game so much. He did it for free. <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah, ultimately... The Xbox leadership team, a lot of the conversations I'm involved in are trying to support what we're doing and, and make sure they're they're supporting us. Um, ton of conversations, Joe didn't mention it, with the marketing and PR teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're reviewing some adverts the other day and uh, a ton of other just promotional things. So just making sure, again, the game shows up in the right way, it's communicated clearly, all, all that stuff. So, yeah, gid- giddy up. All the, the run to launch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Let's go. That's a strange way of saying it. Where do you want to right. start? Straight on to questions. So we had it. I'm sorry. We had a crap look. A uh, lot of... Lot uh, how of, many questions? A lot of questions. Uh, so, so we can't get to all of them. Yeah, uh, sorry we can't get to all of them, but we did try and choose ones that kind of like yeah. highlighted most of the topics that were... Yes, yeah. Um, Where do you want to start? At the top? Let's go for it. Let's go first. <laughs> it's McDoodley. I'm not quite sure where It's McDoodley is from. Like well, it. What's your plan to expand upon questing, voyages, world building? Your defence against too much repetition and keeping experiences unique. Ooh, that's a great question. That's a good question. Um, I think one of the advantages that we have, I mean, we touched on this in the progression video, um, and I'd alluded to this on the forums, I think we all had before, around NPCs in their game having a role and a purpose. NPCs representing different play styles. Mm-hmm. And I think what, what I've always loved and been inspired about when it comes to the trading companies is that these are uh, characters who've come to the Sea of Thieves with their own motivation and they've come there to achieve certain things. It doesn't mean they're going to be there forever. It doesn't mean that their fortunes aren't going to change. And there'll be other uh, characters that will come and visit this world. And I think that's the way we've always thought about Sea of Thieves is this constantly evolving place where new characters can come and that might bring new opportunities for our players. And I think that is inclusive of quests, it's inclusive of world building, it's inclusive of building on this law mm-hmm. you know, that we're putting a lot of time and energy into. So I think earlier in the, on this podcast when I was talking about the thing I'm getting excited about is the opportunity to do more things in that area. Because what I've always loved about our approach to this game is that we always approach it in terms of how do we immerse players? How do we make it feel part of the world? It's not just about turning on mechanic X, mechanic Y. It's about making it feel truly a part of the world. So that's been our focus for launch to create a great experience there on March 20th, but that doesn't stop. We're going to continue to do that. And that's inclusive of everything mentioned there. So very exciting. Yeah. Look into the future. But I think just like if we look at the <clears> kind <throat> of like, you know, I don't know if that player's played the Tech Alpha or they've just watched the progression video or, or, or what, right? But um, if you play the, the Tech Alpha in um, December, you know, we had uh, the um, the Gold Hoarders and we had the kind of the initial Order of Souls yep. stuff with just some kind of initial bounty quests and things. Yep. And that, that, you know, the, the key for us on looking at all of the feedback and all the data and everything else and just from playing it ourselves, right, you know, we can get a really good kind of feel for what's feeling right, is that there's so much work to do in terms of, like the tuning and the feel of all of the different oh, gotcha. voyages, yeah. all the different quests yeah. and things, mm-hmm. and that like all of the different um, trading companies, when you're out there, there need to be emergent rewards and emergent yeah. encounters and things that even if you're out on a quest for one company, you'll get distracted onto something else, and yeah. or and like that every adventure will feel different and will feel unique, regardless of what you're setting out that, to do. That I mean, and, we've, that's our core vision, right? Yes. That, that I go into the world, I've got the option to choose what I want to go do, yeah. and as a crew. We vote and agree on that together. But there's also things in the world that can take you off the beaten path. Mm -hmm. And I think that feel of voyage progression as you move up those promotions, we put a lot of time and energy into that since the test. And this was always going to be the case because we released a slice of that for the progression test. We continue to work on it, but at the same time trying to ensure that there are those emergent opportunities that you go into the world, you do order of souls, but you get pulled off to something else. And some of that was in that progression video and some of it is yet to be. 
shown off. But you're right, and I've heard you talk about this before. <clears throat> it's it's directed goals, but what's unique is you never really know how your story is going to yes. play out. Yeah, and that could be based on who you're playing with, who's in your crew, what crews you come up against, what you see in the world. Yes. Uh, I mean, I like I've probably played 200 hours of Sea of Thieves myself over the last year or so, and and again, it's still. It still feels special, still feels yeah. unique every time I play it. Yeah. And the, the best part about the progression stream was we called it like becoming a pirate legend in Sea of Thieves, and then we didn't tell anyone what happens when you become a pirate legend in Sea of Thieves. I remember that. I remember yeah. that. Like, does this title still work? I'm like, oh, no, becoming, it does still yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but like, there's there's more to come in terms of what we're going to talk about and show off there. Like, I, I will leave it at that. But, Golden Age is still to come. They've got to keep listening, yeah. they've got to keep watching. Indeed. Yeah. Well, this is where I would say wager Andy, but maybe it's wagger Andy. No, w- wager. <sighs> yeah. yeah, it's wager. Why do you do You do this on purpose. <laughs> you roll people's names. <laughs> Just no, wager it. Andy, like, that seems about sure, right. It's wager, yeah. 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 Wager. Yeah. That's actually uh, wager. That's well, the like, yeah. Sometimes I get called out for G. not pronouncing it. Yeah, so I pronounce it both ways and then we'll see. Like, uh, so <laughs> do you think you may uh, add crosshairs to the pistols, specifically when you aim down the sights? And no. where is the fishing guild? So the <laughs> so the, cr- the crosshairs was a very deliberate choice. I mean, we started with well, think of the cannons. I, mean, I mentioned this just now. The idea of immersing players in this pirate world. We made a very deliberate design decision to take off crosshairs because we wanted a game where you feel like you're in the world and you're using that tool to overcome the challenges that you face, rather than using a piece of UI and playing UI. So we're kind of approach to the user interface and all these on screen prompt has always been it tells you the critical information and then it's not on screen so you yeah. know when you are full health in the game we don't have a health bar on screen when you're on the cannon you use the arc of the cannon fire and the smoke trail to inform where you place your next shot and it was the same thing with the pistol we wanted you to use the physical pistol itself to aim a good like, so, example of that is the, the sniper Right. Yeah. Oh, you, we, that was in the progression yes. stream. It was one. So, the eye of reach. Yes. I think that's the first time we've ever used that term. So yeah, that, we don't. I don't want to see it. We don't. We don't change the name or something. Why would we change it? It's fantastic. No. Definitely isn't a sniper. Though, yeah. Right? No, we, we've never. It's odd. We've never called it. We've never called it a sniper rifle. We've always called it the eye of, the reach. Eye of reach. And naturally, you'd expect you. that. You know, it is. It's kind of gameplay trait. Is it is. It's about long, longer range. Bullets still drop off over over distance, so it doesn't completely break that. Um, but it's about precision. So, and, and the air way of doing that in the Sea of Thieves world is to to make the actual lens itself that you aim through cracked. So the crack itself gives you a m- bit more aiming direction. But mm. basically, using an in-world hint rather than a, a UI crosshair. So the thing is, though, I remember the design meeting where you said, "Hey, we're going to have a." a gun with a telescope or with a spyglass attached to it so you're going to be able to shoot at range and I'm like that's ridiculous I remember that yeah. that is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous heart, that did crap. Oh. season 2 of Black Sails oh, yeah. ship on the horizon <laughs> uh, the ship comes over spots the captain yeah. from the crow's nest shoots him with a long range rifle came in the next out Mike I was sorry it, about it that works <laughs> <in violence. laughs> I, now, now I get the vision now I, I get what it but is. honestly that, that, I remember you sending that mail which yeah. was a lovely mail actually um that little scenario, and that was exactly the scenario why we'd add it to, which is, it's the same way, you know, the spyglass, the spyglass that's in the progression mm-hmm. stream that you know, will be in players' hands eventually, um, that inspires all those players' scenarios. You yeah. go to the crow's nest and you pull out the spyglass, and it becomes, it's not a role that we've made a specific thing in Sea of Thieves, it just happens organically by being in this world. Same thing will happen with the Eye of Reach. You'll be the one, oh, guys, I'll hold back, I'll, I'll stay on the ship, I'll cover you with the Eye of Reach, or I'll go into the crow's nest and, you know, scope scope the way ahead I mean these are the kind of things that these tools inspire and that's the way we've always thought about them and Mike's been selling plot ideas to Black Sails yeah <laughs> and Fishing Guild it's just, just, it's just the right idea for this pirate world so, yeah. Fishing Guild <laughs> sorry Fishing, Fishing Guild Fishing Guild he's hmm. probably playing again it's a great idea <laughs> really <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Do you, do you feel inspired when you see a, a, a sunset in Sea of Thieves Islands? Do you feel inspired playing to fish? McCand, was someone playing McCann. Mm. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the violinist. The violin, yeah. yeah. That was, she was genuinely awesome. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. Catching the hall of the day. Yeah. Oh. It's a nice idea. Skull Ripper 76 wants to know, will you ever add islands into future updates or increase map size? What's his name? Sorry. Skull, Skull, Skull Ripper 76. We better Which answer this one nicely. <laughs> 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 so I think, sorry, what was the question? 
Oh, uh, will you ever add islands into future updates or increase map size? I, th I thought, I mean, since that progression test, we've, mm -hmm. we've, we've taken a look at our world and that's something we're looking at now down to the number of outposts. I think naturally what we found when we added progression, it makes the outposts even more important mm -hmm. you know, as, a, as a choke point, as a hub of activity. And that was always the plan. We kind of expected it, but it was kind of interesting to see that validated. Like I seem to be seeing a lot more people at outposts. So since that progression test, we've spent a lot more time kind of looking at outpost placement, how many there should be in the world. But like, as I said, with the, the, I think it was the first um, and, uh, question that you asked, um, I think all of those gameplay components, including islands, including world size, as long as it's reflective of the shipping counters that we want and the frequency in this world, we will look at that in terms of content of adding new content. Yeah. I Hello. think our focus now, though, sorry, is, is very much, though, it's like that the kind of world that we have now is really going and iterating upon that, isn't it? It's like iterating, like you say, with the outposts and like with yep. other dangers and the things. It's about making it like this. <laughs> but it is, though, it's the richness of that world and getting that right. Like, yeah, I mean, is we, right? it, 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 <laughs> it, is, it is, Joe, yeah. Now, yeah. But, like, we haven't used this term for quite a while, but we always talked about the islands in Sea of Thieves and the world itself to be a stage. Yeah. It's a stage where this cool gameplay and these cool scenarios take place. So voyages and the progression with the trading companies, they're your directed goals. But then there's these, I guess, emergent, like random scenarios that can happen to you in the world that take you off that beaten track. That's really the heart of Sea of Thieves. And making sure our world is as supportive as it can be to mm. making scenarios play out differently each time that you want to come back to see of these because you want to have an adventure but you don't know where it's going to take you yeah. that's that's what we've got to deliver on that's our absolute focus for launch is nailing what we've always believed is the heart of our game yeah i heard a really cool story about outposts actually over christmas where someone was going into an uh, into the tavern at the outpost with a chest sitting in there and playing music waiting for people to come in and making friends with them and sort of handing over chests which i thought was really cool <laughs> Nice. No, mur great, no right? murders, just like making friends. Imagine it was Skullripper 76. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Skullripper 76. <laughs> I, think, I think just 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 a general point that's worth stressing is when the game is released, you know, we're going to continue to work on this game in exactly the same way we just, we just roll on. We're still taking feedback. We're still going to iterate on our current experience. And I think new islands, um, new things in the world, that's something we're going to continue to look at and continue to work on potentially. And I think that, like a lot of these questions get asked in a will you kind mm. of way which is like we can do all that stuff yeah. you know, and we've we've built in a lot of development flexibility to do that obviously you know we've got we we're, we're got a well resourced team we've got a team that are focused on the right what we believe the right set of things are and i think that's what it comes down to is you yeah. know we can we can only focus on so many things at the same time we'll focus on stuff we think is actually the most important to players mm -hmm. and and elevates the game to to the best it can be for that day one yeah and then we'll keep looking and we'll keep looking at feedback and we'll keep yeah. looking at the things that, that matter the most. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you've heard me say this probably a million times since we've come back in, in the new year, which is, is it going to move the needle on the experience? Yeah. Yeah. Is it, you can do something, doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Is it, is it going to tangibly make right the, the game, game better to play? You're going to walk away and say, that's better than it was before. Yeah. They're the important things. They're the things that are going to make the experience different. Yeah. So we're going to, because there's quite a few to get through, so we'll just, we'll, we'll trim these answers down and we'll go through them as quickly as Thanks possible. for the feedback. <laughs> I'll adapt to that. <laughs> um, how have the controls against bad actors like the Brig worked out so far? Are you seeing less instances of people trying to spoil the fun or are people trying harder to get through the filters? That's from, That's from Wolfie's, yeah, Wolfie's, eyes. Wolfie's eyes. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, there's a, there's a couple of things that we've got in um, kind of flight on that, I guess. And um, it's been good to... I mean, we knew this when, when, we, when we put the brig feature in there that we weren't done with that feature. But it was our opportunity to use our technical alpha players to get feedback and just validate some of our assumptions. So there's a whole range of kind of uh, changes that we make into that system. And the main, the main ones to kind of call out are that not everyone is using the brig in terms of a genuine um, griefing scenario. Um, people are using it in order to manage their sessions. So what mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot in the data is that you'll see a group of three friends playing together or a group of three that don't want the fourth player. They just want to have a three-player game. And this is something that we wanted to see validated with real players. And one of the changes we're going to make is, is allowing players um, to play in a three, basically a three-crew scenario on the large ship. So that's a change that we'll be making for launch. In addition to that, there's a lot of kind of areas around people ending up in the brig and then just walking away and just staying in there and like literally 
blocking that so crew no from getting rid of them one. where yeah. the, the design intent was always to you know you go, you go into the brig and you've got that opportunity to convince the crew to let you out or it's a lost cause and then that player is essentially forced to quit because there's no point in them yeah. staying there so there's a lot of solutions around afk that if you do walk away we will disconnect you as you would expect at the moment we just kind of leave you in there yeah. and you can just continue to troll the crew from inside the brig once you're in that brig our goal is that you your ability to then continue to hinder that crew is kind of really limited. So we'll be going a bit further on that area. Okay. I think this is a yes or no, but Pedro O'Farrell wants to know, will there be updates based upon community feedback as an add-on? Yes. Yes. Yes, definitely. <laughs> that uh, was easy. Yeah. <laughs> so Memento Memes uh, from our forums asked, will there be any special additions to pre-order? I like the way you look at me to, for that question. <laughs> um, it, it's a fascinating question, um, but... And we've we've had, I think, about how many conversations we've had about different variants of the games. And I think you just look at all, different studios, different publishers, all, all do different things. I think for us, it was... So, let me answer the question. There won't be a special edition, but we are doing lots of things that we think is cool around merchandising. So, we talked about the art book. We've yep. talked about the comic book. The just, law book. The law book. book. I better make sure I don't mention Nothing anything else. we haven't talked right, about. On. You've got a link on the on your, store. Uh, um, on your on my, the controller, the controller. The clothing. Yeah, we've got a merchandise clothing line. And that's where we pause for now. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I think. Did you, you mention know, the controller? Yeah. We yes. did. Sorry. sorry. Control's awesome. Yeah. We should have one here. I forgot um, to bring it up with me. Sorry. But I mean, people like having. We, we love Sea of Thieves, obviously. We put our heart and soul in it. People having the mm -hmm. ability to ultimately buy things that show their love of it, be it a gold t-shirt right through to, like say, the art book and the law book. When we had conversations about bundling them all together, that just seemed kind of weird and artificial for us, yeah. which is like, oh, you know, for people that really, really love it, you can pay $200 or you can pay $150 or £100 and, or whatever it is. And we'll dictate what you get. Yeah, so uh, really we just opted for, hey, Sea of Thieves is the price, variable by regions, um, but £50 and $60, I think, is the UK-US price. Uh, you can obviously get it digitally, you can get it through your retailers. I, I assume retailers can do their own thing, uh, and they will mm -hmm. tend to do that from time to yes. time. But really, um, I've seen a couple of questions asked, should I hold my pre-order? Are you going to announce a special edition? So I think just to answer that question, no. Like, if you want to buy Sea of Thieves, you should just buy the digital version because it's awesome. Um, and don't hold Cross for... Crossplay, play anywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, for us, it's really about everyone having the same version that ultimately helps helps them get into the game. Yeah. Okay. Erin on three. Will more items see secondary uses, secondary interactions, like how you can hold a treasure map in front of you or turn it around for others to see? <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just, that that question panicked me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Like using the shovel as a percussion instrument. Exactly. Yeah. A classic yeah. podcast well, some, example. Some things already have secondary. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Most do. Like yeah. Compass. Water, yeah, compass. Water slash vomit bucket. Pocket watch. Yeah. Compass has a few because you lantern. can still show it to people, but you can also hold our, tree, our trigger to do pieces. Like yep. if you're doing yeah. Well. Lantern, yep. you can do Morse code with the lantern. Flash. Yeah. You can. I mean, like the, a default. <laughs> it's kind of the, a default kind of approach to an item is like. We'll start by saying, what's the reason we can't have a secondary function? We normally start with, we want like at least LT and RT functionality. And the reason we don't is because it just doesn't make sense and we're kind of forcing ourselves to do it. Yeah. So right from the start, I mean, the map, the map and the compass were probably the first items we worked on. Um, they're most natural for sharing and sharing information amongst the crew. But the only reason we don't do it is because it just makes no sense for that particular item. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um... Come on. Are there any uh, well, <laughs> eight chicken six nine seven? Yeah, that's yeah. that's possible. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Are there any plans to make the ocean floor more interactive? Right now, we can get the sea floor in close proximity of the isles only. Maybe some sunken islands, ancient coral covered mm. wrecks, a sunken city that could be reached with a diver. If you bit. watch the progression stream, there is a sunken reef. I just drowned. Oh. What we'll stops you drowning? You need to play the. I won't. Yeah. <laughs> I think Craig and I are going to have to go watch the video again. I just, I just I drown. Know. Like I try and get to the bottom, but now I get stuck. You in saw it. that bit in the video. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm I just to maybe I'm more just... of that, more of that. Okay, it's coming. He's just being mysterious. Yeah. Don't like everybody try and swim to the bottom of the ocean, like thinking it's there and thinking the game's broken. No, like, <laughs> if it's not there yet, it's just not in. But... <laughs> the the actually, uh, 
the treasure artifacts, or I'll keep this quick, mm -hmm. but the treasure artifacts that we had in the progression stream, we show a player swimming down to get the ancient goblet. I mean, that those artifacts were added con primarily where, you know, we, we are kind of underusing our underwater space. We've got the shipwrecks, which are awesome, and it makes perfect sense that there's chests on board because the ship went down with a with the chests on board and you get the barnacle chests. But the treasure artifacts was a way for us to make more make more of the interest below the waves. So that's something we haven't had in any of the builds yet. We're playtesting it here. So the answer to the question is yes, and it's awesome. Cool. Uh, Sith Master D-Man wants to know, other enemies behind... Other... Well, it's not really a question. Other enemies besides skeletons? Killing skeletons is cool, but there could be more types of enemies. Yes. It's not really a question, but yes. yes. There are. <laughs> Just a moment nice about your underwater thing. As well as drowning, the sharks eat me as well. Continuously. <laughs> as designed. <laughs> um, Dead Stick says, is the map always going to be a spattering of islands or will we ever get long coastlines, rocky reefs or other obstacles that make sailing a bit more interesting? Mm. Yeah, there's, there's kind of a, <laughs> there's kind of a, um, a pass that we've been waiting to do, like a level design pass in terms of final placement for hazards. I'm going to say final, nothing's final because we're going to continue to evolve this game um, beyond the launch of it. But there's a there's kind of a revision of the world, inclusive of the stuff I've just mentioned around um, sunken reefs um, that will answer that. So that's kind of had a lot of means about that today, actually. It is a, it's definitely a balance as well because obviously when you're traversing a storm, like it, it feels like there's areas of the world that feel super treacherous when yeah, you're I mean, in the storm. Yeah, like... Exactly. <laughs> it's a nice segue. But uh, there's there's kind of there's been reasons why we haven't done it to this point in terms of getting enough of the pieces in the game around the two the, the, the two ships and how those work and the balance across them and the player sizes and all of that where we feel now um spyglass is a big part of like being able to spot hazards from a distance. Yeah, yeah. So now we've got a lot of those pieces in, we feel like we can well, make another pass at that world, which is what we're doing at the moment. Okay. Last question and we've already answered it, but I think it's worth answering again. King Beyond the Wall, maybe a lame question. Can we stream, share, show off the closed beta? Or will that be under NDA as well? Yes, yes you can. 100%. Please do. We yeah. want to see it. Let us know. We'll yeah. be watching. Yeah. Just the closed beta. Yeah, we're specifically the closed beta. That's, yes. you know, like closed that. beta. It's not covered by our NDA. NDA does not apply yeah. to the closed beta. Just to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now that was. Proper long adventure. Yeah, we were. <laughs> These guys everyone. are just like, yeah. Everyone behind the camera's falling asleep. <laughs> the longest podcast ever. Could Long be, couldn't it? it? Maybe. Breaking a record there, I think. Let's so. drag it out a bit more. Like, yeah. yeah. Just like, just, I was going to say, go to tell jokes, but. No. <laughs> I'm like. So, never mind. But the. Um, we all have to go home for our dinner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to the same place. If you. <laughs> oh, no one was thinking that. Uh, <laughs> you can all come to mine if you want. <laughs> Party Amos. Yeah. The, um, yeah, so obviously, if you <laughs> weren't uh, listening to us, then uh, if you weren't <laughs> watching us, then you can listen to us and equally you can come and watch us like you on our YouTube you didn't channel. Miss yeah, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, it's just me rambling <laughs> for an hour and a half. Um, obviously, we try and do this as regularly as possible. Sorry for the longer delay in between, but we will try and get back to our regular schedule. I say that every time, and then it's a bigger, longer gap each time, but I promise. We normally we, do a better job, though, don't we? Yeah. And we're normally prioritizing. Well, Stuff about the game or the studio. Yeah. It was Christmas and New Year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We had quite a lot come out in three weeks. Yeah. So. so remember, if you want your question asked on the next uh, Tavern with Tavern, then hashtag Tavern Talk. And now we're, we're listening across all the channels. So Twitter, Facebook, the forums, Discord. Yeah. Like all of them. So get your questions on there and uh, let's see if we can top this month's amount of questions for me to spend ages going through and the community team. Uh, so thank you to everyone who has been watching and thank you very much to everyone and Craig for joining us this week as our awesome. guest. And yeah, and we'll see you all very soon. Yes. Pre-order now to receive the Black Dog Pack and access to the Sea of Thieves closed beta. <laughs>